Thank you to Kenneth Copeland Ministries for sowing the airtime for this broadcast. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yeah. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right now. From the top of my head. From the top of my to head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. Welcome. We are so glad to have you with us today for Jesus the Healer. And we know this, that the Word holds answers for all of us today. Yes. And so we're going to feed in directions that will really help you in your everyday life. That's yeah. always been my purpose is that what I minister, it's something that people need every single yeah. day. Yeah. And so we trust that there's going to be answers that you're going to hear for your life. Yeah. So be expecting. Yeah. Yeah. Release your faith. Use your faith today. And if I could say this, in some, on something that you would use, whether it be a notepad, whether it be an iPad, a device or something, get something you can take notes on because yes. you need to note when God says something to you or prompts something to you or makes an impression, He impresses something on your heart, don't let that get away from yes. you. Yes. Write it down because yes. you're going to need it. Yes. Amen. Yes. Um, my jumping off point today is going to be something that Brother Copeland has said so many times in his services, and I'm so grateful he keeps telling it to us. And he will remind us, the will of God is your wealthy place. Yes. The will yes. of God yes. is your wealthy yes. place. Yes. And it's certainly not just referring to financial wealth, yes. but to have your how about a wealth of health? Yes. What about a wealth of peace? Yes. A wealth of joy that your family be at peace yes. and uh, your business thriving. Yes. Every single arena of your life reaches its highest flow when you're in the will of God. Yes. The will of God, God's plan for your life, staying with the word of God, staying with his plan for your life. Um, we know this, that every single arena flourishes and abounds when we're walking out God's plan. Yes. Many times people are struggling with their health or they're struggling with their finances or maybe in their marriage. And they're, if I could say, trying to confess the word, confess, confess. And it's right to confess the word. I don't diminish that. But when you're, when you're not staying with the plan of God for your life, everything's a struggle. Yes. Yes. And many times, sometimes the adjustment is just adjusting something in our life to the will of God. And then when we do, our health goes back into place. Our prosperity just goes back into place. Why? Because the will of God is our wealthy place. It's the place where the blessings of God flow unhindered in our life without anything obstructing its flow. Amen. So we're going to start today ministering about that. And I, I, of course, all throughout the different episodes that we show, I'm, I'm constantly alluding to the will of God mm -hmm. because there is no fullness apart from his will, right. you know, right. and being interested in what he has for our life, yes. not just what we planned for yes. our life. Yes. What he has for our life is so much greater than anything else we could formulate on our own. Yes. Yes. So the more, the more closely and accurately we walk in line with his plan for our life, the easier yes. life becomes. Right. It just, be, yes. yes, there's opposition, but it just doesn't, it just doesn't find its landing pad when you're in the will of God. Right. Amen. Amen. Uh, I want us to look at something with the life of Paul. You know, Paul uh, was used by God to pen about half of the New Testament. Yeah. When you're put in that kind of a position, you're doing something right. <laughs> you know, God has set him up as an example yes. for the body of Christ to look to, 
And um, with that being the case, we, it would behoove us and benefit us to study some things about Paul mm -hmm. so we can say, wait a minute, how did he finish so beautifully? Yeah. How did yeah. he yeah. conduct his ministry and the plan of God for his life so beautifully? Yeah. He gives us clues. Yes. So we're going to, over today and the, the upcoming episodes, we're going to look at a passage where he gave us the five steps he took to finish and fulfill the will of God. Amen. So know this, that your health is in that flow. Yes. Your prosperity is in that flow yes. because there again, Brother Copeland told us, in the will of God is your wealthy place. Yes. Amen. 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 And so we want to look at these steps that he took. Yes. Amen. Yes. Go with me if you would. Let's go find your own Bible and get it and so you can make notes. But we want to go to Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20, and we're going to start at verse 22. And this is the King James translation that I'm going to be reading out of. I'll read through several verses, and then we're going to go back and spend a little bit of time with each part of these verses. So Acts chapter 20, verse 22, Paul is writing, and he says, Now, behold, I go bound in the Spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, save that the Holy Ghost witnesseth in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord to testify the gospel of the grace of God. You go, well, I don't see the five steps. Well, we're going to see them. Yes. We're going to look at them here because he gave us very definite steps of success to fulfilling the will of God. We, we see how he approached um, his ministry, the plan of God for his life. And you say, well, Pastor Nancy, I'm not called to the ministry. This will work the same for anybody. Just fulfilling the plan of God. It's not just for five-fold ministers. Let's, let's take a little bit and let's go back through these verses and see some words here. He says this, he says in verse 22, say that the Holy Ghost witnesseth in every city saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. What's that mean? That means that Paul was on his way back to Jerusalem and all along the journey, all the way back and no matter what city he stopped at, somebody would minister to him by the spirit. When you get to Jerusalem, there's going to be, there's going to be difficulties. There's going to be bonds and afflictions. They're not telling him not to go. Many times though, they thought, they interpreted that as he shouldn't go. And they tried to get him not to go. But God was not having them to say that to him to stop him from going there, but to help prepare him. Because to be forewarned is to be forearmed. And so um, these are some things I wanted to state before we even start with these five things that I want us to see. I, I so appreciate in verse 24, the second half, he says, so that I might finish my course with joy. Yeah. Notice this. He didn't say so that I might finish my course. Right. Yes. He said that I might finish my course with, with joy. joy. It's not just finishing. It's how do we finish? It's not just running the race. How are we running this race? Because that matters. You know, if you have an Olympian that he is, he goes to the Olympics and you have a track runner, they still have to qualify once they get there because there are so many runners from other countries that they have to qualify once they get there to even be able to run in the finals, right? right. Yes. They might be, they might have won the finals in their country, but now they're coming to a world stage yes. and they've got to qualify for that. So it's not, they don't go there with the intent of just running. They don't go to there just to run. They run to qualify. Yes. They run to place. Yes. And uh, we're not just running our race. We're running to win it. Yeah. How we run it. Yeah. And it's not just running does not get them on the front lines right. of that competition. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's how they oh, run it. Yes. Well, it's the same thing with us. It's not we're just trying to finish and run the course God has for us. It's how we're to run it. You know, uh, if we're running it, if I could say this, less than healthy, there's a better way to run it. We can run it healthy. 
It's not just running it and barely getting along financially. No, we should be running with abundance. Yes. We shouldn't just be running it, but we're troubled and harassed and bombarded in our mind and depressed. No, we're running it with joy and peace. Amen. So it's not just about running. It's how we run it. And so Paul states, he says, so that I might finish my course with joy. You can't finish a course with joy if you didn't run it with joy. Amen. So these things are so connected to health and people don't realize it, but it is. So I want us to back up and look at these things. How did he finish his course with joy? Because he did. So how did he do that? I want us to go back to verse 20 and we're going to start breaking this down a little bit more. It reads in verse 22, rather, Acts chapter 20, verse 22. He says, now behold, I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem. Now, what is, what's he mean when he says Jerusalem? He's just talking about a location that he's supposed to go to. What's Jerusalem to us? It's where did God tell you to go? Where did God tell you to be? So we could say it this way. I go bound in the spirit unto where God told me to be. So he's not there yet. He's not at Jerusalem yet. He's journeying toward a place. How is he going to arrive there knowing that when he gets there, opposition is going to uh, be awaiting him? How do you keep going when you know hard times are ahead? You go bound. Not bound by the enemy, but bound by the conviction of your own spirit. Bound by what the word is living on the inside of you and it anchors you. It binds you to your victory. So he allowed himself to be bound in his spirit, not bound in his mind, not bound in the flesh. I'm not talking about something that's a bondage. I'm talking he established something and he would... If we could say this, he wrapped himself tight yes. in the truth of, where, of going where he knew God told him to go. Yes. It didn't matter that hardship was going to face him. Yes. This is where God told me to be and I'm going to be there. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. That's what he means when he says, I go bound, but notice in the spirit, this is a heart issue. Yes. This is not just a mental issue because your mind will quit on you. <laughs> if it knows that there's hardship coming, You know, um, I love something that Dr. Lester Sumrall used to say, and it's important for us to recognize this. He said, when you say yes to God, Mm -hmm. let's say he calls somebody to start a business. He calls somebody to become a pastor. He calls somebody to do something they've never done before. When you say yes to God, knowing he's calling you to do something, you not only said yes to God, but you said yes to every opposition that you're going to face along that road. You just said yes to challenges. Not The challenges aren't from God. The opposition isn't from God. But when you are making progress in the plan and the will of God, the devil will not stand there and congratulate you. He's going to do everything he can to hinder and oppose you. So anytime you just said yes to God, you said, yes, I will take on the challenges of arriving at that place. You understand that? This is what Paul was saying. I'm I'm bound in my spirit to go where God told me to go, be where he told me to be. And you know this, you just don't float into God's best. You won't just be inactive with your faith and just hope you get there. You take purposeful steps in the face of opposition, in the face of circumstances to do what God told you to do. And every single believer, there is a call and and an assignment on every single believer, really on every single human. God has a plan for every single human. You can't even know what that plan is till you get born again. But once you're born again, you have a plan to fulfill and just know there's going to be opposition to it. And sometimes that opposition will show up in your flesh. Sometimes there may come a physical oppositions. You have to learn how to face those and not let it stop you. But you, but you lay hold of the victory that's yours in spite of any opposition, whether it's financial, whether it's mental, whether it's um, opposition that comes through relationships in your life. Um, Paul said he's telling us how did he finish his course with joy? Number one, I go bound in the spirit. 
unto Jerusalem or unto the place God told me to be. When I'm where God told me to be, I'm not letting something pull me away from where God told me to be. I'm bound to the will of God. That's what he's saying. I'm bound myself to the will of God. This is not up for debate. So when the devil entices me and tries to tempt me, of course, too late, I'm already bound. In my heart, I'm not entertaining other options that the, because listen, the devil will bid high for you. He will offer you great job opportunities that pay you twice as much as your current place, but it's not about money. It's where did God tell you to be? That's what it's about. I don't make decisions based on money. I I make decisions based on the will of God. What did God say to me? What did God tell me to do? Where did God tell me to be? That's what governs every decision I make. I don't let money be my deciding factor because money will dupe you. It'll deceive you. It'll pull you off. And the devil won't mind giving you double what you make just so long as you're out of the will of God. He doesn't mind. He'll pay double to get you out. Get you out of the will of God. Amen. And we're willing to bypass anything the devil would offer to make sure we stay in the will of God. Decide I'm bound to God's plan for my life. I am bound to it in my heart. I mean, this is a heart thing. It's not just something I agree to mentally because when opposition comes, the mind will want to quit and the mind will want to look for a different route out. But when you're bound in your heart, you're not entertaining any other option. So notice this. He said, I go bound in the spirit. Listen, you're not ready to move ahead in the plan of God until you're bound to it. He said, I go bound. Don't try to go until you're bound. Don't just go that way and say, well, I'll see if it works. I'll see if it's easy. It won't be easy. But why? Not because of God, but because the devil will oppose. He'll push back. But if you think right, even what he tries to make hard won't be hard for you. If you think right. Amen. Amen. So basically, Paul did not leave the direction of his life up to the debate of circumstances, Mm -hmm. meaning this, if it's easy, I'll go. If it's hard, I'll, I'll, I'll pick my own direction. He didn't, let, he didn't let circumstances decide for him the direction of his life. Yes. So key number one, we see this about fulfilling the plan of God for our life. So that why? So that we can live in divine health. So we can live in, in divine prosperity yes. to its fullest. Yes. We, have to, we have to join our will mm-hmm. to God's plan. Yes. Yes. Amen. God won't force it upon us. Uh-huh. We choose it. I bind myself yes. to it. Yes. Um, have you ever seen an old movie and it's maybe one of those period movies to where they're in a ship, you know, and mm-hmm. maybe the 17, 1800s yeah. and they're traveling by ship and a storm comes and they'll say, anchor yourself, yeah. strap yourself uh-huh. to something. Yeah. Yeah. Why? So that the storm can't wash you off course. Right. So the storm yeah. can't take you overboard yeah. and yeah. take you out of place. They would wrap themselves mm-hmm. maybe to a pole yeah. there, yeah. a mask yeah. there or something in the ship. Why? They're binding themselves. Why? So that they're immovable in a time of opposition. That's what Paul said in my heart. I am bound. I, I bound myself. Not God binding him. He bound. I go bound. I bound myself to the will of God, to the plan of God, to do what God told me to do, to be where God told me to be. Amen. This is where, you know, when you just resolve it, this is what I'm going to do. That, that just does away with a lot of temptations in your life. Because when you're bound, something that the devil offers you, it won't tempt you. It just won't tempt you. Amen. We struggle inwardly and we struggle outwardly when we're not bound to what God said to us. Well, we, we end up struggling. Um, you know, wondering, should I or shouldn't I? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, my family, they don't like it. Or, you know, y- at some point you have to decide what's God saying to me. Yeah. Yes. And that has to mean more to you than anything else. Yes. Inwardly, yes. If, you're, if inwardly, if we're struggling, we have to go back and say, have I agreed to the plan of God for my life? That's good. That's good. Is there some aspect I'm kicking against instead of agreeing with? You can't be bound to something until you agree with it. Amen. Amen. And many times people struggle. They know in their heart they should be doing something, but ah, they haven't brought themselves into the agreement of that. So the quicker we agree, the quicker we eliminate struggle that's offered to us. Amen. 
So you can struggle inwardly, but many times you can struggle outwardly. Yeah. True. You can struggle financially. Mm -hmm. yes. You can struggle with your health. You can mm -hmm. struggle in your marriage. You know, when you're out of the will of God, everything, everything, everything just sets you off. Yeah. <laughs> it, I mean, you're just like on edge. There's no, there's no flow for you. You know, even, even when you're being opposed, even it, when you're in the will of God and you're being opposed, you're still in the flow of God. Yes. But when you're kicking against the will of God for your life and there's opposition, man, there's no flow. It's like everything in the marriage just gets on your nerves. The job gets on your nerves. You know, financially, you're just on edge, you know. Um, that comes from not agreeing in here. Well, praise the Lord. Um, years ago, now my husband, um, after he got saved, he had a church um, that he pastored out here in Southern California for eight and a half years. And then he traveled to Tulsa. I lived in Oklahoma at that time. And that's where we met. And we got married in Tulsa. And he was there about eight years there in Tulsa. Uh, we were there together. And then God spoke to us and said, go back to Southern California and get in position for the last day revival. Mm -hmm. So we picked up and we came back. God said that to us in about 1988. We didn't get back out here until 1990. Um, it took us about two years after God said to come back to Southern California before we came back. Over those two years, we didn't move fast enough. Mm -hmm. So we started struggling financially. Now, see, we agreed in our hearts that we were going to do it. We were going to do it. But we were waiting for outside circumstances to congratulate us. And they didn't. We had a building there in Tulsa. My husband had built a church building, seated 1,000 people. It was on 85 acres. And we had taken a couple of years and built it. We got it built. And right after we got it built, God said, now I want you to move back to Southern California. <laughs> well, Ed's plan was, and, it, you know, it was a, you know, a good plan. We'll sell the building, uh -huh. take that money, go back out to California, get reestablished in California, except nobody came to buy the building. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, a little glitch, a little hitch in the plan. So we sat there waiting for the building to sell and it didn't sell. And so I said to my husband one day, I said, uh, after two years of staying at home, what started happening because my husband had always had a traveling ministry. Even though we had started that church in Tulsa, he still traveled. Um, and so there was, you know, when we had the church there, of course, uh, there was an income through, for his salary through that, but it's primarily through traveling. Mm -hmm. But when we were slow in coming back to California, um, the traveling mm -hmm. side of the ministry started drying up. So our finances started drying up. Mm -hmm. Why were they drying up? Because when God says to move somewhere, mm -hmm. provision isn't there yes. anymore. You got yes. to get to the new place where God told you to be because the grace of God has shifted to the new waiting for you to arrive. And yes. if you don't arrive, there's provision. Therefore, there you're not receiving. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And you, you remember when um, Elijah declared about that there would be a drought, a famine mm -hmm. in the land. God said to him, go dwell by the brook Cherith. Yeah. Yeah. And he did. He went and, so to speak, set himself there by brook. He drank of that water. And twice a day, ravens, birds came and brought food. They brought meat and they brought bread to him twice a day. Uh -huh. He yeah. was provided for. Why? Because that's where God told him to go. Yeah. Even though God told him to go live by a stream, who would have thought that his provision was by the stream? Yeah. But it was. Yeah. Meat was brought to him. Yeah. Bread was brought to him. Yeah. Total provision was brought to him. Just being where God tell, tell, tells you to be. But as he was there one day, it started drying up. He didn't just say, well, God told me to be here and I'm just going to stay. Well, when it started drying up, he got the clue. Ah, maybe God's redirecting. Uh -huh. yes. 
So then God spoke to him. He says, get up and go to Zarephath. I've commanded a widow woman there to sustain you. Mm -hmm. So see, when it was time for him to move where he was at Mm -hmm. and God had told him to be there, it started drying up. When something's drying up, don't keep trying to dig there. Don't keep trying to stay there. Pay attention. If something is drying up, talk to God. Is God redirecting me? Is there another place I need to be with my life? Well, that's what happened to the prophet of God, Elijah. And when he did what God said, he went to, he went to a different city. His provision were that was there. His miracle was there. And so was miracles for somebody else. But I want you to see this. We stayed in, we stayed in Tulsa too long after God told us to come back to California and it started drying up. It started drying up. Where did we miss it? We missed it by waiting for property to give us permission to obey God. We were waiting for land to sell. We were waiting for a building to sell because we thought when this sells, we'll move out there. When God says to do something, you don't have to wait for something else to give you permission. Now, don't misunderstand me. If God would have said, stay here till the building sells. That's fine. But see, God didn't say that. We said that. That was a, that was our good idea, (laughs) which wasn't so good. It didn't work out so well for us. Um, and so we fell behind. Why? Because we weren't moving at the pace God was directing us. This is what Paul said. I go bound into the spirit under Jerusalem, meaning we should have been, we should have been quicker to move on what we had agreed to in our heart. And when we didn't, things out here started showing it up that we were not moving fast enough. Well, uh, I've only scratched a little bit of number one on this. And there's five of them that we're going to get to. Uh, So we invite you, make sure you join us next time because there's so much that needs to be said. Why? Our health is connected to our obedience. It's connected to the plan of God, Mm -hmm. our prosperity, our family, our children, the well-being of our marriage and our home. It's connected to being at the best and the highest place that God has for us. So know this, God has a plan for your life and it's your wealthy place. And it is our privilege to find out how do we fulfill that plan for our life? How do we arrive at the finish with joy? Because the plan of God does not make life hard. Now, if, if things are hard, then we're doing something wrong. Amen. Yes, opposition will come, but to the man who's in faith, to the man who's in the will of God, those difficulties are easily bypassed. Amen. Well, you don't want to miss it next time because we're going to go further and have good, good time around the word. Amen. But until next time, remember this, Jesus is the healer. God bless you. To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. Your life will be changed as you meditate on the revelations in this book, Visitations from God by Nancy Dufresne. Order your copy now at DufresneMinistries.org. Come join us for our Dufresne Ministries Miracle Crusade in Paducah, Kentucky at World Harvest Church of Paducah. May 21st through the 25th. For more information and to register, visit our website at DufresneMinistries.org. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DufresneMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries for making this production possible. This is Pastor Nancy Dufresne, and I'm the president of World Harvest Bible Training Center in Murrieta, California. One of the things that Dad Hagen would often say to us is every generation must be evangelized and taught, and that preparation time is never lost time. 
We're so grateful for the opportunity to help train the next generation. One of the things that God is doing in this era is He's training us in the Word and the Spirit. And so we are training the students in that format. It's not simply an academic approach, but a Spirit-led format. Romans chapter 1, verse 11, Paul said, For I long to see you, that I may impart some spiritual gift to the end, that you may be established. This Bible school is a catching school. You're going to receive impartations that come through teaching, through the laying on of hands, and through fellowship with those who are hungry and moving with the Word and the Spirit. The difference is the spirit of faith here. Yes. Uh, yes. It's not just the book learning. But this right here is about the spirit of faith and learning yeah. the life in that spirit of faith. Yes. After coming to the Bible school and looking back on the time that I've had here, I really see how God orchestrated things and brought me into a place where I could get the impartations that I was going to need uh, in order to move forward in my life. And even to this day, being out of Bible school now for uh, you know, eight years almost. It's, it's crazy to see all the things that are still working in my life through Bible school and uh, through the relationships that I built here. Um, just because you have a family, just because you have, uh, you know, things that are going on in your life already or things that maybe you're already doing, if you feel uh, any form of a lead to come to the Bible school, put the application in, make the first steps. You know, follow the peace in your heart. And if you have peace about coming, Everything will come together, you just keep making the steps. You know, one of the things that I loved about the Bible School is we have so many guest ministers and so many different perspectives that come into play and you get to learn um, all the different things that help make them successful and you also get to learn what to watch out for. Before I joined Bible School, I was very career oriented. I was very education oriented, which are good things. However, it engrossed my life to a point where I lost direction towards what God had in store for me. But because I went to World Harvest Bible Training Center, it brought me back to a grounded, established, um, anchored place in God's Word. And because of that, I was able to move towards what God has for me. And what God had for me was more than what I could even imagine for myself, more than what the success that I thought the world can bring me. I think for me, uh, the whole, picture of Bible school is learning how to look to God and how He takes care of you because you're in His plan. It's never too late. Yeah, yes. You're never too old. <laughs> I encourage anybody that um, you're even thinking about coming to the school. If you're thinking about Bible school, don't think anymore. Just go ahead and fill out your application and submit it. You're not going to regret it. You're going to build relationships that last you a lifetime. The Catherine I was before Bible school is a completely different person than who I am now. So we invite you, pray about becoming part of World Harvest Bible Training Center, a place where you will receive impartations, demonstrations, and revelations. God bless you.